Okay, the video we're going to do today is to review the TACCON 3MR trigger. This is a, a new trigger that's just come on the market, and I just got uh, my trigger a couple of days ago. Um, this trigger has three modes. Um, you can see the selector here is a safe, the semi mode, and then the positive reset mode. And the positive reset mode, according to what they have on their website, uh, uses the uh, force of the bolt to help reset the trigger actively so that you have a very short reset, a very short trigger pull. Uh, this is advertised to have about a four and a half pound trigger pull and the idea is that, that you have a trigger uh, in your semi-automatic gun that will allow you to simulate a full auto fire or perhaps a bump fire rate of fire. And um, so we're going to take this out and test it. And what I wanted to do is compare this to a couple of other systems. Uh, on the internet, uh, people are talking about the Geisley uh, Super Dynamic 3-Gun Trigger. And so this receiver has the Geisley Trigger. This is a flat bow version of the uh, Super 3-Gun Trigger that Geisley has. And this trigger has a very short and a very light trigger pull and reset. And so on the internet, a lot of guys have been talking about this trigger uh, and saying that this trigger has a lot of similar properties to what uh, TACCON has tried to achieve in their trigger. And so we wanted to uh, take this trigger out and try to achieve a very rapid rate of fire with this trigger. This trigger is designed for competition shooting and uh, Geisley does not recommend this trigger for home defense or for duty use. Uh, so obviously they have set this with a very light, uh, short trigger pull uh, so that you can get rapid shots off. I have not really tried to simulate a bump fire or a full auto fire rate with this trigger, but we're going to when we go out in the field uh, with the TACCON system and the Geisley system. And then for our test, our control is going to be a registered uh, Colt M16A1 select fire. And so this will be the uh, standard that we'll compare uh, the other systems to and see what kind of results we get. I don't know what to expect. Uh, I have not shot this trigger. Um, and so we're going to take it out together for the first time and we'll see uh, what kind of rates of fire we can accomplish with that. And what we've tried to do is make sure that uh, each of these receivers uh, is as similar as possible. Uh, we're going to start with a heavy buffer. Um, we also have access to the standard carbine lighter buffer, the H2 buffer, and the H3 buffer. Okay, so we'll have these out in the field, and if it looks like we're getting bolt bounce or other problems, then we can try different weight buffers, and we'll try them with each system to see how they compare. What we'd like to do is compare these trigger systems with uh, different gas systems, we're going to use direct impingement systems and piston systems. With the direct impingement system, we plan on using a standard carbine length direct impingement system. This is a Bushmaster upper. We'll take this out and use this for our test. Then we'll use a direct impingement system with a mid-length gas system. This is a Palmetto State upper. And so we'll have uh, two different length gas systems, both 16-inch barrels with the carbine and the mid-length gas system direct impingement. Then we're going to use both a long stroke and a short stroke piston system. For the long stroke piston system, we'll use the primary weapon systems uh, design. So we'll take this upper out and we'll use that uh, with these triggers and see if uh, we get a difference between uppers, between gas systems, between gas lengths. Um, and then for the short piston system, we'll use a Leitner Wise individual carbine uh, short tappet system throughout the test. I'm just going to use this uh, surplus. It's Malaysian uh, surplus ammo back in the good days when you could get this about $100 a can. Uh, so we'll be using a 55 grain M193 ball ammo and I'll just uh, there again to keep things even. Uh, we'll use the same magazines, a Lancer magazine. We could try different magazines but rather than go from one magazine to another let's just use the exact same magazine in the test for all the uh, different uh, receivers that we're going to use. Okay, so what we did, uh, we were going to try to compare the TACCON trigger to the uh, Geisley trigger and then compare it to a full auto. But we've been out here, this is our first day with this trigger. Uh, we've tried about uh, seven or eight magazines, uh, two different shooters. And so far, I can do a little double tap, um, but I can do that with the Geisley trigger and I really haven't gotten anything that 
that seems like a string of, of fire consistently. So we're going to uh, we're going to just try and see and, and videotape this. Now, uh, when we were using the trigger system, uh, we did get several um, chambered rounds that did not ignite that had uh, uh, light primer strikes. And um, we've uh, changed the buffers. It did not make a difference. Um, and then I used the Geisley trigger, and then I used the M16, and we weren't getting those same kind of failures at all. Um, so I certainly am suspicious that it's probably the trigger itself. Um, but let's just uh, show uh, what happens. Um, I've got uh, 30 rounds of Malaysian surplus ammo. This is the, the primary weapon system upper. It's a long stroke upper. Uh, it's been the smoothest shooting this afternoon, so I'm going to kind of stick with that as the uh, as the upper that we're going to try to to show um, the TACCON trigger system in. I'm going to uh, leave the brass catcher off so you can kind of see the brass as it streams out too. Um, we've got safe, the uh, semi-auto, and then the assisted reset position. So I'm going to just start with the assisted reset position and we'll just try to shoot as fast as we can. I'll try a couple of double taps and then I'll try to do a, a string of fire and see what happens. So double tap seemed pretty easy, but I want to try to keep it going. Okay, come in. Now we have a dead gun and uh, the bolt's up, so let's just see. I don't know if it's out and didn't hold it back. Nope, okay. So you can see in the chamber, there's a round. Okay, there it is. Now we're gonna look at it, come in close. And this is the failure that we were getting before. You can see where there's a, actually a pretty significant but light primer strike. This was happening uh, several times with this trigger system. Um, I don't think it's bolt bounced because we shot this uh, full auto on the full auto lower with the same receiver and uh, and it was functioning beautifully. So I'm not sure what's happening to cause that, but it doesn't seem to be the gun itself. It seems to be the trigger. So let's try. So there's one failure. Put that right there. So double taps are okay, but every once in a while we get this light primer strike failure. Okay, so I'm gonna put another variable in. I'm gonna let my friend John try this and see what he can do. Maybe he can do better. Um, we're going to leave it on the assisted position, the third position. The bolt is open, the magazine's in. So come on up, keep it safe. And then you can just drop the bolt when you're ready to go and just try to shoot it as rapidly as you can and see what happens. it out safe you'll lock back safe. lock back okay good we're going to take this upper off and I'm going to use the same upper and now I've got this uh, identical lower the spikes lower but it's got the Geisley super dynamic three gun trigger in it which has a very short trigger pull very light reset and we're just going to kind of compare it. Uh, it's got a heavy buffer, so everything's the same. Uh, it's the same upper that we just shot. And I'll use a magazine, the same magazine, and the same ammo. Okay, come on. Let's just come over here, and just uh, we'll, we'll start from here. Okay, so here we've got um, the Geisley trigger. Everything else is the same as what we were just shooting. And I'll just see what I can do with this. I'll do a couple of double taps. And then I'll try to uh, make a little run, and we'll see what it feels like. Okay. 
Okay, that's it. All right. This is Mike, um, MBell556 on YouTube. Uh, we were out today uh, trying the new TACCON trigger, comparing it to the Geisley uh, Super Dynamic 3-gun trigger, and we also had a, a registered uh, M16A1. Um, to say the least, I was fairly disappointed in the performance of the TACCON. Uh, you see the videos um, with not uh, just myself, but some other guys shooting, and we had uh, similar results. Um, what we found is that um, the TACCON seems to be a fairly uh, light, uh, easy trigger to shoot. It was easy to get double taps, um, but with the TACCON trigger, we had a total of four failure to fires. The failure to fires were all the same. They were a chambered round with a fairly heavy but light primer strike that did not set the, uh, the round off. And this occurred four times with the, uh, guy, with the uh, TACCON trigger. Um, and uh, did not occur uh, with any of the other uh, guns that we were using. Uh, the only failures we had were when we were using the gun with the TACCON trigger. So uh, we tried the Geisley trigger to compare. And uh, sure enough, like a lot of people were uh, talking about on the internet, uh, this trigger has a very short uh, trigger pull, very short reset. It is not recommended for home defense or duty use by the manufacturers. Uh, it's designed to shoot fast in competitions. And, you know, I don't shoot competitions. I just shoot for fun. Uh, but we took that trigger out today to compare, and it performed uh, flawlessly. Uh, it actually shot easier and faster. Double taps were, uh, were easier. And actually, uh, the rate of fire seems a little faster with the double taps using the Geisley trigger. Also, I could get strings of fire uh, much easier with the Geisley trigger uh, than with the TACCON. So... Uh, not only did it seem like the Geisley was just as fast or faster, easier to shoot fast, um, but it didn't have any failure to fires. And the TACCON, unfortunately, we had four failure to fire. So it's really concerning because um, not only did we not get the fast shooting performance, but we got some failures that were totally unexpected. Uh, that has been reported by some other folks. And I don't know uh, exactly what the problem is. We tried uh, different buffers, different gas settings, and um, it really seemed to be the trigger and uh, not another uh, problem with the system that we were using. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure uh, what to make of all this. I'm fairly disappointed. Um, hopefully, um, you all will learn something from it. Uh, make of it what you will. Um, I was really hoping that uh, and really expecting that we'd have a, a very different result and I'd be real tickled about having a trigger that performed sort of like a bump fire rate of fire, which was you know, slightly, sl uh, slightly slower uh, than a full auto fire. But uh, that didn't happen and uh, we also had significant failures. So uh, anyway, it was fun shooting. We had a good time this afternoon and I hope this uh, was useful. Thanks. I'm not getting any support from uh, any of these folks. I have no affiliation with any of these folks. Um, I just like to uh, enjoy the guns and play with the guns, and I wanted to just try to let you see uh, what we were experiencing uh, when we tried the trigger for the first time.